Well, Gordon, we're, uh, we're talking about sons of the father. Gordon Dalby, you've come a long way, all the way from California, the USA, and uh, we appreciate you in the land down under. This is your seventh time here in Australia, it so is. it's not as if it's the first, is it? <laughs> They're all enjoyable. Yeah, and you've even learnt that we don't have wolves in Australia, but we've got dingoes. Yeah, and they go right. after the lone sheep. So, um, But you've got a chapter in this, in this book here, Sons of the Father, and it's called Loving a Woman. Mm -hmm. It strikes me that's one of the biggest challenges. I've been married uh -huh. for 33 years, and wow. my wife is wonderful, but it's always been a challenge. Tell uh, us about it. it well, there are, if you haven't discovered, there's a few mysteries in there. Uh, um, I, I had uh, 125 men at a conference recently in the U.S. I said, how many of you, when you were 11, 12, 13, did your father come to you on his own, take the initiative to come to you to talk to you about girls and your sexuality in a helpful way? Uh, maybe he wrote you a, a letter. Maybe he, you know, went up, talked to you, said, look, son, um, this is a power that seizes your body, you know, it's going to be very powerful in you. It's a, and I, I want you to know about this from the man who loves you, not about the dudes out, not from the dudes out on the street. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about what's going on in your body and in your spirit as you encounter and be around women. How many do you think out of 150 men said, yes, my dad was there for me. He really saw that that was an issue that I was going to face and he gave me the tools, what I would need to deal with it as an adult. I'm not sure, Gordon. Um, I'm guessing it'd be low, but just to tell two. me, two, only two men out of 150 men. I Look, I, I've got to be honest with you. I, I, I've read that chapter of the book, and uh, I, I guess I was struck with a bit of guilt because I'm not sure I've done that. Um, on the positive side of the fence, I've given a lot of talks, and my children have been in those talks, and I've talked about marriage, and I've talked about the Song of Solomon, and I've talked about the mystery of, of sex and the beauty of sex. Uh, but really, I, I, I wonder if I could be one of those um, 148 well, that confess. didn't do it right. Yeah, I have to confess. I mean, I, I didn't do it until my wife, uh, when the boy was at, at, a, at a small private school, and uh, one day in the sixth grade, his teacher was sick, and they asked Mary to go in and substitute. And she came back right away and said, it's time. Time? you got to talk to him. About what? About girls. What do you mean? She's, they're wearing bras. I'm, I'm sure they're having periods now. I mean, he's, he, you've got to talk to him now. It's, it, you couldn't just... Okay, uh, you know. <laughs> it's scary for it a dad. It is scary. Why is it scary, Gordon? Tell me. Well, first of all, because, because sexual desire is a spiritual phenomenon. We talked about spirituality and the fear of spirituality because it's more powerful than we are. And every man with a mustard grain of honesty knows that when you enter this area of sexual attraction, you're in power far beyond your own natural human ability. If I, if I touch this, ta touch this uh, sofa edge, that's a physical act. I can feel it. But a man can see a woman 100 meters away from him, never touch her, not get near her, he's 100 meters away, and something can stir in his mind, in his body. Now, where did that come from? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I know what you thought. As a good Western European-based thinker, you thought there was a wire between his belly button and hers, and therefore it's being, no. Trust me, no wires. So where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. if, if you were just a little honest, a little humble, you'd say, I give up. This is power beyond my ability to master control. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why it's so fearful to us. It originates in the realm of the spirit. I have whole teachings on this at abbafather.com, my website and stuff. We don't have time to go into all that. So that's why it's so fearful, because we know we're entering into the realm of the spirit when we talk about these things. And I think for many of us fathers, we've made a lot of mistakes ourselves in this area. I certainly have. Yeah, I think we all have made our share, fair share of mistakes. I think we and have. And it, it's an area that, uh, that, that can be painful for a man oh, to discuss. And you don't want your son to make those mistakes, and yet... When sometimes we don't even know how to avoid making the mistakes. In many ways, we empower our children by telling them. I, I have tried, uh, Gordon, with uh, my children to tell them of my failures, uh -huh. but still it's hard, isn't it, as a, as a father? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's, I think what the most important thing is a boy needs to know is daddy's with me. And to say it's scary sometimes, son, isn't it? And I, I remember when I was, I was struggling then to think, how do I talk to him about this power 
that's in his body and his spirit. And I thought, you know, boys love fire. And uh, when we go camping, my son and I, when he was, when he was younger, we used to, uh, he wanted to start the fire at four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it'd be long before the sun goes down. Let's get that fire going, Daddy. It's power, you can feel it, you know. So I thought, aha, uh -huh. I remember when we, we started looking for a home when we moved to Santa Barbara where we live in California. He was only about a year old then, two years maybe. And I told Mary now that we're gonna see some beautiful homes, uh, but it's gotta have a fireplace. Why does it have to have a fireplace? Because we've got a boy. What do you mean? I, please, honey, uh, trust me. Mary called me, she said that this amazing house she wanted to get to, but it has this beautiful kitchen. But I said, does it have a fireplace? And she says, well, no. I said, well, that's not gonna make it for a boy. We need, we need a fireplace for a boy. Because every boy, you know, look at this fire we got here, isn't it great? I mean, just look at the power in there as you stoke it, you know, and I've got power here, which I'm removing all that heat coming out of it like that. Man, I just want my son to be standing right here beside me. I want him to get that brown ooze that comes when we go by the fireplace together. And I want him to see that's where the fire is designed to burn and no place else. Uh, look, honey, uh, let's go out again and look, you know, okay, so, so we, we found, a, finally we've come to some compromise, okay. So here I am when, he, when he's uh, 10 years old, I'm saying, um, now, you know, son, um, we really like that fireplace in the house, don't we? Yeah, Daddy. Why? What's good about it? Oh, it's warm on a cold night. It makes you feel all warm. Your body gets warmer. Does? Yeah, it does, okay? And it's fun, too, Daddy, because, you know, we put marshmallows out there and popcorn. It's a lot of fun. That's right. It's a I lot love of fun. fire. Yeah. I love fire. I love fireplaces, fire yeah. And what about all of us in the family when the fire comes? Oh, we all sit close together. We feel, don't we feel more like, yeah, we feel so much closer. It's better when we're close like that. Yes. Okay, here we go. All right now, son, what I want to tell you here is that the time is going to come when you'll look at a girl or be close to a girl and your body's going to start to get warm. It's going to, you're going to feel something stirring in you. Now, I want to say right away, it's good. God made us that way. But it's like a fire. Now, I want to ask you one more question. Why do we light the fire in the fireplace and not out on the kitchen floor? Why do we light the fire in a fireplace, not out in the garage? Why do we light the fire in a fireplace, not on the bedroom floor? Oh, Daddy, it would burn the house down. Ah, we're getting there now. Okay, now, son, you got it. That fire in you has been designed to burn in one place with a woman that you've been called for life to live with and committed to live with, whether you fight or don't fight, whether she looks good that day or doesn't look good, that's where you burn that fire. And if you do, it's going to make you feel warm. It's going to be fun. It'll be fun. It's going to make you feel close together, just like when we did this fireplace. Oxytocins, they are the hormone for feeling close. Really? And it, they're released when we actually touch each other. And of course, they're released uh, quite strongly when we make love. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised about that. Yeah. Well. And I, and, and I said, yeah, of course, and I said, but if you burn that fire someplace else, outside where it's designed to function, it will destroy your home. And I, that's, we started with that. And he got the, he, he didn't know quite, but you know, but I can always tell him now at 17 or 17 years old, and I can say, remember the fireplace. And, and, and we, he's got that in his memory bank, at least like that. So there are tremendous mysteries going on here that power beyond our ability to control. And that, for Western man, is unacceptable because it feels shameful. We're supposed to control things. We know how to engineers to put men on the moon. We... Good luck, brother. If you can explain to me this power of sexual desire, uh, it's a spiritual phenomenon. And so within that framework... You know, it's a spiritual phenomenon, I believe. Uh, Gordon, if I can interrupt you for yeah, two seconds. Sure. Uh, the reason it's a spiritual phenomenon is that is the only way to create another human being. Of course, science are messing. Uh, science are messing with their uh, the whole process these days. Oh, yeah. But of course, it's shown to be uh, a lot of producing a lot of failures. Dollar their sheep sort of fell over uh, from uh, arthritis after a couple of years. I think people are going to going to prefer the old-fashioned way, quite yeah. frankly. Well, I think it's <laughs> more fun for starters. <laughs> But, of course, uh, it's something that uh, is uh, incredibly mysterious and it's incredibly very powerful. And, uh, hey, you just can't beat it, can you? No, you can't. And you're, but you're, that's a very good point about it. It, it, is, it is creation itself. It, it beckons and hearkens unto creation itself. But what, what men don't realize, see, without a spiritual perspective, you, you don't realize that a bond is formed between the partners when sexual 
intercourse occurs, a spiritual bond. Now, in a culture that doesn't acknowledge spirituality, oh, it's just animal magnetism. This Sorry, from the people who gave us that wonderful phrase, recreational drugs. I mean, talk about handicapped, out of reality, out of touch. I mean, any man knows. I used to have guys come to me when I was pastoring in Santa Monica on the beach in California, and these guys, oh, I just met the woman from a pastor. Great, tell me about it. She turns me on, the fireworks, the camera. I said, wait a minute, brother, time out. Hold on, I said. I said, are, are, are you having sex with her? Oh, sure. Have you had sex with other women? Sure. What's her name? Sally, okay. You're with Sally now. Can you tell me when you're with Sally now, you never think of Jane or Barbara or Sheila? Oh, well, you know, Sally has her times when, oh, and, and I have my sexual needs. I said, brother, there's no such thing as a sexual need. Needs, water, food, shelter, you know, but I've never seen a man, never heard of a man yet who ever died from lack of sex. Now, I know it feels like that sometimes, but it ain't going to happen, okay? So if you want to talk about your desires, we can deal with that. But you need to understand that when you have sexual relations with these women, a bond is formed in the realm of spirit between you and that woman. And that's mean when you're with Sally right now, you're not just with Sally. Because there are connections spiritually with all the other women you've had sexual relations with, and that's going to sabotage your commitment to Sally. And of course, that's why um, it's been shown that uh, cohabitation and having serial relationships uh, actually um, lowers your chance of having a long-lasting marriage. Oh, I'm sure of it. Because of you're, you're, it, it? you're disintegrated spiritually. Yeah. And but we don't. We, but we don't have any. In, in Western society, see, we don't even acknowledge the fundamental reality of life. And I'm sure God must shake his head. How do these people even survive? And I, I think, how did I ever survive? By the grace of God is what it was, that's all. But the, within these mysteries like that, see, where is the old man to come alongside us and teach us and say, not even to teach us the 10 steps, to how to, but just to say, son, this is really mysterious. And I don't have all the answers, son. What? If, and and that, that, that takes the shame away. It does. But I know something, son, I'm with you in this. And we can talk these things over. So what would be the three things you'd say uh, to actually to articulate this best on this whole, the challenges and the success of loving a woman? What would you say? The first thing you have to recognize is it's, it's literally humanly impossible. In the natural, it's not possible. Love comes from God, as a Krima Krishna would say. It's not something that we generate out of our human nature. It's a bond that comes when the, from the realm of the spirit. So you have to understand, there has to be humility. And... That's the essence of relationship, is the humility before God and before each other. And then secondly, you have to realize that within the midst of that mystery, you don't have the power. And so you're going to need to go to the Father from whom all fatherhood in heaven and on earth receives its true name. You need to begin to, re begin to know God as your true Father. I'm not talking theology here. I'm not talking just preaching. I'm talking about reality from a man who, who says, I didn't get taught this by my dad. I need it. Well, why not go to the father who gave it, it would have given your dad anyhow? We, the challenge of fathering today is to give our sons what we never got. And how are you going to get it? You go to the source. And so you, 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 you've got to begin to recognize, I didn't get it from my father, but we get together with other men. We go together to the father God and we start learning from each other. Instead of trying to each man to reinvent the wheel, make the same mistakes over and over again, we get rid of the shame by saying, man, I really blew it here, and how do I, I did too. Yeah, well, let's go together and pray to Father God and see what we need to do here. But to have that kind of relationship with a living God, sadly, you don't get that in church very often. It's more about 10 things you need to do to measure up to be a godly man. And you know, I can't even do one of those things, much less 10 of them. And as you walk away, feel more ashamed. Rather than what you need to know is your daddy loves you so much. <laughs> I, once a, you, I saw once a guy had a sign that said, uh, God is watching you. And underneath it says, because he loves you so much, he can't take his eyes off you. Gordon, that is a fantastic way to wrap up loving a woman. Yeah. Because uh, our Father in Heaven does love us and he's got time for us, which of course is part of that healing process. Thank you so much, Gordon. My pleasure.